All right, everyone. My name is Pascal Borel, and I'm not speaking to you from the Swiss mountains. I'm in Geneva, still in Switzerland, to read to you the book I have written named 2024, and which purpose, again, is to give you back your sovereignty, to give back uh, the people's sovereignty, and uh, to rebuild the strength of the democracies uh, at your service, the citizen, the people. The book 2024 is available both in English and in French. I've written it in French and in English on Amazon or on our website www.4ovet24.com. On our website, it's entirely free, you can read it on screen, and below each chapter, you will find a comment section to share your ideas, your happiness, or your criticism, and uh, please do share them as a, dry, as a driver of my own perception of your feelings, uh, and to improve uh, uh, you know, the path that will, the roadmap, should I call it, that will restore the strength of our democracies to our service, to your service, to the service of the people, the citizens. Now, this is a book which contains, in fact, seven different books on education, on health, on politicians, on democracies, where they originate, uh, on constitutions, on a legal framework, and mostly about the roadmap, which is, to my perception, the shortest path to lead us where we all want to go, restoring your purchasing power, restoring, again, your sovereignty. Today, I'm going to read you one of my preferred chapter. And preferred chapter because I've named it The Empire of Lies. Just to illustrate, you know, how much we've been deceived and manipulated by the media, by the governments, and even by, you know, experts, specialists with plenty of diploma and uh, what I call the allowance to bill coming from universities. You will enjoy it. I've written it more to laugh with you. Uh, well, you'll see. And probably also to give you a better understanding of the type of lives that, you, that are addressed to you by, as I said, medias, governments, and so forth, uh, in order to capture the value of your work under the form of taxes, uh, direct, indirect, VAT, uh, I mean, all possible means to, you know, rub the value of your work. Let's go for the reading. An Empire of Lies. A few citations. No one is more hated than the one who tells the truth. The goal of a superior man is the truth. If you must choose between freedom and truth, choose truth, for it is the only path to freedom. The wise who can see through the shadows and lies of their culture will never be understood. They will be hated because people fear the truth and even more, the light. If you do not tell the truth, someone else will. Any action that begins in lies or anger ends in shame. 
You can forgive a child for being af afraid of the dark. Your problem begins when adults are afraid of the light. In 2024, you live and we all live in an empire of lies. They lie to you about everything. I am going to demonstrate that in this chapter. I do this genuinely to share a laugh with you, literally. More from mockery than to prove anything. You are already familiar, if only intuitively, with all the examples I'm going to discuss below. I am just going to shed light on them from a different angle so you really highlight the absurdity of our situation. It is humorous, of course, but it is also painful. If you are still one of the few well-meaning people who love their fellow human beings, who trust others to live in harmony with your family, with others, and with nature, you are going to laugh, but it will be a bitter laugh. When you realize that, through your complacency, your lack of courage, your abandonment of all your duties towards yourself and others, you are responsible for everything that I described below, your bitter laugh will turn into tears. If you are even vaguely able to connect the dots between the facts and the lies that you accept as the truth, you will cry in shame. Maybe that is what you need to finally wake up and embrace social non-cooperation, the only way to get humanity and democracies back on track. Without violence, without insults, without contempt, and most importantly, in an in inclusing, inclusive way that gives everyone the opportunity to contribute to the future success of humanity. Let us begin by giving credit where credit is due, starting with the primus inter pares of the empire of lies, politicians. Politicians lie to you about almost everything, not out of pleasure or a desire to deceive, but because our current democratic structures and electoral system systems literally force them to do so. If they do not lie to you, they will not be elected. It is as simple as that. When you do not lie, when they do not lie, they censor your access to information to prevent you from being a citizen with decision-making power. They lie to you about public finances. Not only do they not give you access to the state's accounts, but when they are forced to do so, they drone, they drown the, they drown the information in complexity, which prevents you from understanding the facts and prevents you from making any effective decisions. In reality, they project their budget and their ability to steal the value of your work from which they derive their, they protect, excuse me, they protect their budgets and their ability to steal the value of your work from which they derive their power. For them, saving money means increasing state revenue, thus increasing taxes, printing money to create inflation that creates inflation, and generating political debt, which you still naively call public debt. Some examples. They lie to you about education. 
making you believe that they are the only ones capable of educating your children through standardized public education programs, i.e. state-run schools. Worse, they have made you believe that education is free, that you will not pay anything for humanity's most precious asset, knowledge. I will not go into details here. I have fully allocated chapter 6 on education to this topic. They lie to you about healthcare, making you believe that through state intervention or mandatory, mandatory insurance, medicine is free, that it is a social entitlement. They have lied to you so well that you accept having a financial intermediary with no medical expertise between you and your doctor. In fact, a financial intermediary between your health and your doctor. You permit their interests and financial logic to control health care. And even worse, to control the treatments to which you are or not uh, entitled to. Once again, I will not say more at this point, as I have allocated Chapter 5, Health, on this topic. They lie to you via their electoral promises, selling them to you like gifts to a child. It is in fact even more dishonest because they know it is you who will pay for these gifts via your taxes, via various forms of levies, debt and inflation. You will simply pay much more for the service rendered because the state will take its cut and add the cost of its bureaucracy. They lie to you about the costs of uh, physical infrastructure, roads, railways, bridges, water services, sewers, electricity, and so on. The budgets for the maintenance, uh, which are systematically exceeded, and for which the cost is 10% of the construction value per year, on average. They lie to you about inflation, which is purely and solely the result of political will in collusion with the central banks, which agree to increase the, monetary, the money supply to finance their deficits. Technologies that would completely prevent inflation exist, such as, for example, blockchain. But of course, they are not going to use them. Doing so would deprive the state of a revenue stream, preventing it from stealing the value of your savings without even having to send you a tax bill. They lie to you about immigration, which they actively organize through international treaties with the support of the press and media to bring tears to our eyes by showing you the human distress that it causes. They support this influx of cheap labor to keep our economies running and to, satis and to satisfy the wishes of their advisors the heads of large corporations who benefit directly from this crime. They lie to you about the wars that they impose on you to keep you under control and to fuel the military-industrial complex as a cornerstone of the Western economy. Since financial transactions are classified as secret defense, defense secret, it is easier for all involved to take their cut along the way. 
due to this financial secrecy, you do not see anything and you are forced to accept it. If you ask for transparency, they make you believe that you are endangering the nation and you will be prosecuted as a traitor. Furthermore, the best way to control someone is to make them afraid. We all fear war because it is the citizens, our sons and daughters, who will die on the battlefield, not our leaders. People prefer the most unjust peace to the most just war because, in times of war, the law falls silent. It is the ultimate manner to allow politicians to impose their control outside the rule of law, since they make you believe the very survival of the nation is at stake. You have no choice but to accept it, even when the conflicts are entirely fabricated by those who benefit from tightening their grip on the citizens. It is disgusting. The only good news is that it is the last resort available to governments to retain power before they collapse, before they die. In this case, this death is life's greatest gift because it allows rebirth. It makes way for the elaboration of entirely new rules which benefit from the lessons of the past to better unite us. Our governance systems must be reborn and for that to happen, they must first die. It will be tough, but better a horrible end than, rather than, an endless horror. Let me repeat, better a horrible end rather than an endless horror, like the slow agony in which we have been drowning for decades. Politicians lie to you about everything. Political debt, also called public debt, social security, economic growth, unemployment, pandemics, the list goes on. Everything that comes out of their mouth is nothing but misleading interpretation of facts designed to manipulate you, to steal the value of your work, to keep you under control, even at the cost of your most fundamental freedoms. Worse, they will make you responsible for the total failure of our current democracies, even though they are the one in charge the one who are supposed to safeguard these democracies, the one who administer them, they are solely responsible for this situation. The empire of lies is at work. The education. The education system effectively lies to you about the obligation imposing that your children follow the state curriculum, pass all the state-recognized examinations, which are the only examinations that will allow your children to get a remunerated employment, the only legitimate guarantee of their success. They lie to you about the necessity of allowing and succeeding of of follow, they lie to you about the necessity of following and succeeding in a uniform and standardized program that turns your children into the good employees, the little money-making machines needed by the big in industries of our economies. They turn your children into sheep that will follow the flock, 
shape which the state needs to keep you under control and maintain its power. I will not provide example or say more here for now, as I have allocated chapter 6 again, education, on the topic. The healthcare. The financial logic is everywhere, even at the heart of your health. Western medicine does not seek to cure you. It provides you with palliative treatments for your symptoms to retain you as a long-term client. Western medicine could focus on prevention. It possesses the solution to cure you, but it does not use them because of the consumer logic that, it, 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 that drives it. You do not feel well, you are sick, do not change your habits. Just take those three pills at $20 or euro a day to keep the pharmaceutical money machine running and come back to see your doctor in four months so that your doctor can build the state social security or mandatory health insurance. Whatever happens, you have a clear conscience because you, you still believe that health care is free, that you are not responsible for your own health. It's a topsy-turvy world. They lie to you about the price of all medical treatments protocols and the amount of earnings for the pharmaceutical industry, for the insurance industry, and for the state. They lie to you about your weight. Do you really believe that after 3.8 billion years of the evolution of life on Earth, on Earth, that Mother Nature has programmed you to be obese or constantly overweight? Well, of course not. But you eat sugar three times a day, which makes you produce insulin three times a day. Insulin which is the most powerful storage anabolic hormone in your body. And so you carry on. You store and you store and you store. Please refer to chapter 5, Health, which covers your health. For example, the benefits of a sugar-free or ketogenic diet, which is so easy to implement. Obviously, it does not generate money. So the healthcare industry prefers to lie to you to retain you as a source of revenue for them, even to the detriment of your own health. They lie to you about the frequency of your meals in collusion with the food industry. Together, they make you believe that you need to eat three times a day, whereas Throughout our species evolution, we ate at the most three to ten times a week. How could we have become the top predator of the planet if we needed to eat three times a day to survive? <laughs> In a world saturated with food, all religions and religious philosophies wherever they originate, have ad advocated fasting in this for thousands of years. Do you think that is because it is bad for you or because it is good for you? Well, you know the answer. Please, again, refer to chapter 5, which covers health and about specifically the benefits of intermittent fasting also known as OMAD, one meal a day. It is fundamental, but it does not generate money for the healthcare industry, for the pharmaceutical industry, and even less for the food industry. They prefer to lie to you, to retain you, again, as a source of revenue, even to the detriment of your own health. They lie to you about your cholesterol, making you believe that it is your enemy.
in inverted comma. Even though cholesterol forms all your cell's membrane and is crucial, a crucial component of your brain as it promotes the formation of synapses that, that connects all your nerve cells, your neurons. It is essential for the production of D3 vitamin, which is necessary to fix, fix calcium in your bones, as it plays a key role in producing hormones like testosterone, cortisol, cortisol, and many others, as it produces bile, which is essential for digesting fats. The list of metabolic reactions in which cholesterol is indispensable is endless. But they make you believe that you have too much cholesterol, and only the healthcare industry knows how to fix the bad programming of the planet's top predator, the human being. So, consume, take statins, to lower your cholesterol level, a range of medication that brings in over $40 billion in profit per year for the pharmaceutical industry. The empire of lies is at work. They lie to you about your joint pain, your fatigue, your depression, your allergies, your asthma, your diabetes your inflammations, your age, and your heredity, which they say are responsible for Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease, in fact responsible for all your ailments. Once again, these are endless lies. I will not say more for now, as I have located again Chapter 5 on health, and on this topic, later on in the text. The media. The traditional press, or modern media, lie to you about everything. You could also call them the fake news media, or the legacy dying media. They are owned by four or five large international groups which control 95% of them. All of these media are bound by their owners to a specific editorial line whose goal is to shape public opinion, to support those who subsidize them the most, namely a few private sector advertisers, but primarily the states on which they rely for most of their revenues. They have thus become, without exceptions, opinion media, whose priority is to bring to power politicians who agree to use public money, your money, to subsidize them in return. In, sorry, in return, the politicians elected thanks to their support back the financial interest of these four or five groups who have helped them gain power. Through their control of the narrative, not content with merely subsidizing them with your money, the, politician grant, the politicians grant these four or five groups tax breaks and other financial advantages in all the sectors in which they operate. In return, these four or five groups use their electoral control to shape public opinion on all topics. Politics, war, environment, health, pandemics. Anything that makes money, irrespective of the topic, even the most outrageous lies. The circle is thus complete. Uh, I don't know whether I've read that correctly, but you can re-listen to the last few sentences. It's a vicious circle. And as I said in the text, 
Please read again that last sentence. It's a long one. In fact, it is simple. I was going to say, shake your intellectual laziness and make the connections. Because even if it is painful, it is entirely within your reach. To summarize, those who recount the stories rule society. French presidents François Mitterrand and Jacques Chirac even boasted, the bigger the lie, the more it is believed. There is absolutely no conspiracy. There is absolutely no plot. We should all help each other. We should all help each other without discussion because we all have common financial interests. Power interests, if you prefer. We, as I have already demonstrated to you, we are a collaborative species. We help one another. So the press and modern, modern media are not allowed to address you about any topic other than those which their masters and restrict, restrict, restrictive rules permit them to address. In a democracy, foreign media are already censored you are not allowed to access Russian or Arab media. In a Western dictatorship, this is censored, even criminalized. In fact, it is racism. It is xenophobia. This is anti-democratic. This is anti-constitutional. But you accept all of this because you have been brainwashed. You do not even realize what is happening because you've been so completely duped by multiple generations of assassins and criminals who have progressively twisted the constitutional and legal frameworks to serve themselves instead of serving you. You are nothing more than a poor sheep who obediently follows the herd even when it is uh, headed straight for the cliff. And you know that it is headed straight for the cliff. But you accept it because you truly believe it is not your fault. You did not know it. It is other people's fault. They have betrayed you. You only have excuses. All I can tell you is stop lamenting your lot and retake responsibility. After these few examples concerning politicians, the education system, healthcare, and the press, I propose that we now explore and analyze the mechanisms at work in other area, areas that affect us all globally and directly. One of my preferred ones. Environmental examples. A majority of organizations working to preserve our, our environment lies to you constantly. They, knew, they do not always lie inten intentionally or to harm you. They are unaware of the falsehood they perpetuate. They are deeply convinced that they possess the absolute truth. They believe they are uniting us behind noble causes, thinking that they can restore order to a chaotic world, a world that we have actually made so complex that no one can fully comprehend it anymore. They defend their convictions, their truths, what I would call their dogmas, with the energy of desperation. Unfortunately, dogmas and other religious-like beliefs rarely mix well with the rigor of science. Let me recount an anecdote. 
I was meeting with some people from the IPCC, which is the Inter Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, which is the United Nations body for assessing the science related to climate change. They wanted to convince me that because of livestock farming, cattle represent the largest physical amount of animal mass on earth. In effect, the heaviest of all animal species present on earth. Of course, this is totally false. Earthworms alone, earthworms, represent over 60% of the mass of all animal species pre present on Earth. But the IPCC claim it is cattle to make you feel guilty about liking meat, to make you feel responsible so that you will pay for your misdeeds. It has become their business model. The same IPCC experts explain to me that due to human activities, five species disappear from the planet's surface every day. Any honest biologist can confirm that biodiversity is at its historic peak today, despite the fact that 99.9% .9 of species that have ever lived on Earth in a period spanning 3.8 billion years, are actually today ex extinct. What the, IPPC, what the IPCC sorry, do not want you to realize, what they do not want you to know, is that Mother Nature abhors a vacuum. If less adapted species disappear, they are immediately replaced by other species that are more efficient and better able to exploit the vacated ecologic niches. In fact, humans have little to do with the process. Most of the time, it is the evolutionary pressure from better adapted species that replace those less suited to their environment. The logic is simple, but so true that it is likely beyond your grasp. Try to think simply. I implore you to avoid your complexitytis and you will be less easy duped by environmental criminals who profit from your ignorance. I remind you that ignorance is the mother of all disaster is the root and stem of all disaster. The Greenpeace organization lies to you for purely financial reasons, to keep alive the money-making machine that they have become. Here is an example from my personal experience. When I was trying to raise capital to finance one of my companies, Ethics SA or Ethics LTD, Ethical Integrity Corporate Standard, I spent an evening with the top executives of Greenpeace who were taking a break between Christmas and New Year in Verbier, one of Switzerland's most beautiful and expensive ski resorts. They kindly hosted my wife, Bridget, and me in a luxurious chalet, likely rented for over $100,000 per week. Having been managing director of SNP, Stalin Pools, in Switzerland, in France, then director of Fidelity Investment in International in Geneva for many years, they welcomed me as a finance, a finance professional. From the beginning of our discussions, I realized that I was talking to finance professionals as well, who fully understood the economic logic of my company, Ethics SA. And it, the, 
and of the, its potential return on investment, of course, you understood me. After a few glasses of excellent champagne, the conversation became, let's say, more relaxed. The Greenpeace executives opened up and made it clear to me what they expected. Their potential investment in my company had nothing to do with the environment or ethics. They wanted public and media visibility. Their business model relies on donations from individuals who believe that Greenpeace will save the planet and secure the future of generations to come. Their only concern, therefore, is to obtain maximum visibility for each of their actions, to cast the widest net, and to draw in the maximum money from donors. Holidays in Verbier are expensive, after all. <laughs> in other words, they only engage in actions if they are absolutely sure that the media visibility will raise money via donations in the weeks following their actions. Not months or years, but in the weeks. In this sense, Greenpeace is more demanding than the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which has a 12-month investment return window. When I proposed to the professional man managers employed by the Gates Foundation to invest in Ethics SA, they confirmed that they never invest in a product, in a company, or in the humanitarian action, unless they are absolutely certain that within 12-month window, they will have their return on investment. In plain terms, they want to recover their initial investments plus the percentage of profit within a one-year time frame. To summarize, Greenpeace has a return on investment horizon of just a few weeks, while the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's horizon is 12 months. In this sense, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is more ethical than Greenpeace. And you probably have the impression, do you not? that these are non-profit institutions absolutely worthy of being tax-exempt by your governments? Well, congratulations. You have understood everything. Not. I just gave you a glimpse of Greenpeace's true nature and their financial motivation to Protect the environment. An anecdote, another anecdote in the same vein. I was in Geneva, invited to lunch by my friend Patrice, who wanted to introduce me to one of his clients, someone he thought I would get along with because that person was a nature lover and environmentally aware. The person, like me, was passionate about scuba diving and he had just returned from Alaska where he visited the site of the Exxon Valdez wreck, one of the worst oil spill in all of human history. I asked him if it was for his love of a major disaster of major disasters that had that attracted him there. No, he replied that he went there for his passion of scuba diving. I was puzzled by his reply and said to him that based on what I have read in the press, the location must be completely devoid of any maritime life. He laughed and told me that, on the contrary, 
The location was an explosion of marine life, such as he had never, ever seen elsewhere in his scuba diving experience. He told me, to my amazement, that he was diving every day with hundreds of dolphins, thousands of large fish, and hundreds of thousands of all type of shellfish. I felt like a fool. He reminded me that, Believing everything you read in traditional media is dangerous. Trusting them is lethal. He was absolutely right, and he's still even more right today than ever. As it transpires, the, the ecological reality is that the Exxon Valdez oil spill initially killed off all marine life for several years. But once the pollution peak had passed, the spill provided the nutrients necessary to feed phytoplankton, the first link of the marine food chain. And what happens when the first link in the food chain finds the ideal conditions to reproduce almost indefinitely? It is an explosion of life. Life from the smallest of organisms to the largest of predators. But the media will never tell you this, because you might start believing that nature is more powerful than they want you to think that it is. Nature self-regulates even after the worst disaster, whether humans or natural disasters, of course. Indeed, Nature can and does even benefit from disasters in most cases. Environmental organizations, with the complicity of the press and governments, want you to feel guilty about destroying your environment. It is essential to keeping you under control. They will use any means available to mislead you to prevent you from reasoning intelligently. And if there is money to be made, they will bring in experts and specialists with endless credentials to deceive you. You must feel guilty and you must feel ashamed to trigger the psychological mechanisms of externalization by which you will agree to pay to free yourself from the weight of the guilt that you feel. You will see the proof of this just hereafter. Climate and energy example. Okay. Let's go for that one. You are going to love it. Climate and energy example. This is going to hurt, but it is my duty to expose the ultimate lie, the one with a capital U and a capital L. It is not, it is the most insidious lie ever orchestrated by our democratic states, a large-scale scam affecting, affecting almost everyone on this planet. It is the lie that brings in the most money. It is the lie that has been turned into a business model supporting hundreds of thousands of jobs worldwide. It is the lie of which you are totally oblivious that literally threatens the diversity of species and threatens life as we know it on our planet today in 2024. Let us get down to the facts and the arguments. Human beings are responsible for global warming because 
to heat ourselves and to move around, human beings release carbon dioxide, CO2, the main greenhouse gas, into the atmosphere. This will cause the destruction of our environment and the end of our civilizations. To protect you, the state is forced to charge you anything between 400 and 800 percent in taxes on your energy. Is that all? Maybe not. Let us go over this point by point. Without the greenhouse effect, the Earth's average temperature would be between minus 13 and minus 17 Celsius, i.e. between 1 and 8 degrees Fahrenheit. Life as we know it would be absolutely impossible because the Earth would be covered in ice all the way up to the equator. Therefore, you should thank, thank the heavens every day for the blessing that is the greenhouse gas effect, which allows us to have temperatures that are compatible with life on our planet. All climatologists know that the green gas responsible for 70 to 85 percent of the global warming greenhouse effect is water vapor, not CO2, not methane. CO2 accounts for less than three, two percent of the global warming greenhouse gas effect possibly reaching 3% according to less rigorous estimates. In fact, it is rather more like 1.5% of the global greenhouse effect on Earth. In other words, it's totally homeopathic. Well, CO2, therefore, plays a negligible homeopathic role in the global warming greenhouse gas effect on our planet. Indeed, it is also at low concentrations relative to the atmosphere as a whole that CO2 deploys most of its greenhouse gas effect. Without getting into the details, this is due to the physio physiochemical properties of the CO2 molecule. If it takes 800 ppm part per million to increase the atmosphere's temperature by 1 degree, it will take an additional 1,600 ppm to gain the next degree and an additional 3,200 ppm for the next degree and so on. You will notice that in the inertia of the intellectual manipulation to which I'm subjected, just like you, by the so-called climate specialists, I talk about CO2 concentration in ppm's part per millions, rather than talking about percentages. The expert manipulators use the ppm measure to prevent me and you from making insightful analysis. At first glance, 420 appears to be a relatively large number. It is tangible. We can easily visualize it. In reality, 420 ppm of CO2 actually represents zero 0.042% in percentage terms. Why should we have not expressed the measure this way? Why not express the measure of CO2 concentration in the atmosphere as a percentage figure as we normally do it in everyday life? Once again, 
This serves to better disguise their lies, to better manipulate you, to make you believe that CO2 concentration is high when, in, when it is in fact very low in absolute terms and in particular in comparison to historical data of the last 500 million years. We will explore this later in the text. In 2024, CO2 does not even represent half a tenth of a percent. Let me repeat, CO2 does not even represent half a tenth of one percent of Earth's atmosphere. But 420 ppm is a unit of measurement no one uses on a daily basis. It adds weight to all their lies. But there is something even more important to be said here. All living organisms, fungi, plants and animals, use carbon which constitutes the core element of every molecule of which they are composed. We call this organic chemistry or the chemistry of life, if you prefer. All carbon atoms at the core of the architecture of all molecules of which you are composed come from atmospheric CO2. Plants absorb carbon, carbon dioxide and photosynthesis splits the CO2 molecule to keep the carbon necessary for their biological structures and metabolism, of course, before releasing oxygen as a waste product. Carbon dioxide is the only source of carbon for plants and more generally, of all living beings on Earth. One could say that there is not a single atom of carbon at the core of all molecules of which your body cells are composed that was not at the origin CO2 before being transformed by photosynthesis. When you consume a salad, or vegetable, or a fruit, or nuts. The carbon you absorb comes from atmospheric CO2. It is thanks to CO2 that you find these nutrients in your plate. Even if when you consume meat, fish, cheese, eggs, the carbon at the core of amino acids, proteins, fatty acids, the fat, and carbohydrates, sugars, come a hand, comes a hundred percent from carbon dioxide, from atmospheric CO2. In conclusion, just as phytoplankton is the first link of the marine food chain, atmospheric carbon dioxide, i.e. CO2, is the first molecular link in the chain of life on our planet. This is a fact. It is undeniable. It is absolutely incontestable. Any first year biology student will confirm this. You might now be beginning uh, to understand that atmospheric CO2 is a blessing. Without it, life on Earth, as we know it, would simply not exist. It is in no way a pollutant. Carbon dioxide is the first molecular link in the chain of life as essential to life as our water and sunlight. Together, they are the three ingredients that are necessary for plant photosynthesis. If one of them is missing, the plant dies. 
in 2024, atmospheric CO2 concentration is about 0.042% or, if you prefer, 420 ppm. This is very low compared to the average CO2 concentration over the last 500 million years, which was 4 to 10 times higher than today. Mm i.e. between 0.12 and 0.42%, or again, if you prefer, if you wish, between 1,200 ppm and 4,200 ppm. I draw your attention to the fact that if we drop below 0.02% of CO2 in the atmosphere, plant suffer the plant life suffers. And below 0.015% of 100 or below 150 ppm, photosys photosynthesis becomes impossible and plants die. Just a century and a half ago, during the period 1800 to 1900, we rarely exceeded 0 0.025% or 250 ppm of CO2 in the atmosphere, putting photosynthesis and thus all plant life at risk. One reason for this decrease in atmospheric CO2 concentration over the past few million years is that marine organisms such as corals and crustaceans have become extremely efficient at using calcium, calcium carbonate derived from CO2 to grow their skeletons and shells, exoskeletons. So even coral, coral reefs and their entire ecosystems depend directly on CO2 concentration to thrive. One effect of the current low atmospheric CO2 concentration is that terrestrial plants open their pores to the maximum to try and capture the carbon dioxide on which they depend. In doing so, they lose a lot of water. Just like when you perspire, you open the pores of the skin, they open the pores of their structures. Through exudation, they lose water and they must compensate for this water loss by consuming up to 10 times more liquid. Many biologists see this as one of the root causes of the desert desertification on our planet. It is even proven that since we release more CO2 in the atmosphere, over the last 30 years, we make a spectrographic analysis of the wavelength reflected by the Earth. And versus 30 years ago, or 25 years ago, I can't recall the precise number, the planet is like almost 30% greener. And that is solely coming from the slight increase of CO2 from last century or century, century and a half ago level to what it is today. Anyway, I'm not going to extend on that one, but just to let you know. <laughs> well, at this point in the chapter, <laughs> you might be thinking, what the hell is he talking about? Everything that you are now reading probably represents the exact opposite of what you currently believe. However, for most, learning what you already know is impossible, which is why you need to empty part of your cup. You need to unlearn to bring, to break, the inertia of the belief that you currently that currently populate 
and fill your brain completely. The inertia of everything that you were taught in school or university. Your problem is that you do not want to unlearn. You do not want to replace lies with the truth. You're afraid of freedom, just as you are afraid of the light. You want to continue being part of the herd. You do not want to have to confront the sheep around you, who docilely follow the prevailing narratives. In fact, you want to remain ignorant because you find your comfort in your ignorance to the point of accepting the worst lies without realizing how much they actually harm your quality of life and your environment itself. You want to continue to believe in the lies of scientific experts who are fully aware of everything I have just explained to you. But they do not present the facts in this way for fear of being ejected from the herd themselves. Do not think for a moment that they are not capable of making the connections that a seven-year-old child can easily make. They lie to you because they are simply afraid of being rejected, of losing their job, of harming their financial interests, afraid to lose their status, their status in our society. This actually stems from an education system that needs a complete overhaul because this system no longer teaches us to accept conflict as part of our life, to manage it without violence, to confront it, to defend the truth, to defend our convictions and the values that make humanity so strong. I delve into this topic further in my chapter 6, Education. Back to CO2. Another anecdote. I was recently with a friend who is an independent journalist who has an incredible knowledge about everything. I would call him a walking encyclopedia. He insisted that, bio that biologists had diagnosed certain varieties of trees in the Amazon rainforest as becoming obese due to an excessive high concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. How is it that he cannot make the connections? He knows that the 2024 CO2 level is very low compared to the level of its concentration over the last 500 million years. He knows that wheat or barely, has a genome, a DNA, at least three times more complex than that of a human being. He is aware that only a small percentage of DNA defines what you are. The majority of DNA is kept, presumably, to allow the species to adapt more quickly to environmental changes. He knows that for the overwhelming majority of plants, like 99.9%, the complexity of the, their DNA gives them an adapted, adaptive capacity superior to our own. He knows that 99.99% .99 of plants can only benefit from an increase in CO2, the indispensable basis for photosynthesis. In spite of his scientific knowledge, he allows himself to be manipulated by the proponent of the ecological business model, in inverted commas who need to make you feel guilty 
to generate their wealth and by consequence try to make us believe that CO2 is the poison that makes trees obese. You should know that when CO2 levels were at 0 0.25% or 2,500 ppm, i.e. six times higher than today, the Earth boated lush forests and accompanying fauna all the way from the Arctic to the Antarctic. When I tried to reason with my journalist friend by simply reminding him of the above fundamentals, he became aggressive and did not let me finish my explanation. This so-called erudite man defends a dogma which has become a fabulous money-making machine by making you feel guilty for those unscrupulous enough to use this dogma against you, to exploit you, to exploit your ignorance, and to steal your money. It is the world turned upside down. There is nothing even more important as, uh, important, as you have now understood, Photosynthesis captures carbon from CO2 and releases oxygen as a waste product. I wanted to say there is something even more important than what I just explained two minutes ago. And this is what I'm going to go on. You must know that 99.999999% of the oxygen atoms in the Earth's atmosphere are produced by plants and photosynthetic organisms with phytoplankton in the oceans leading the way. So all the oxygen you need that you absorb with every breath, the oxygen you cannot live without for more than a minute or two from birth to death, comes exclusively from CO2 transformed by photosynthesis. These are, again, indisputable, undeniable facts. Without atmospheric CO2, there is no photosynthesis, there is no oxygen to breathe, there is no carbon available to form the core of every molecule in the chemistry of life on Earth. There is no life as we know it today. You probably now understand that the carbon atoms that serve the architecture of all the molecules in your body come from CO2, and every oxygen atom you breathe also comes from CO2. Yet, you will probably continue to believe that CO2 is the worst pollutant, that it will cause the downfall of our civilization and all living species, because it is responsible for the greenhouse gas effect, thus in turn responsible for the global warming, which will end life on Earth. Bravo! Well done! Great analytical skills! Great ability to make connections! Oh, great intelligence! Oh, yeah! You do not want to understand a simple and inescapable reasoning based on incontestable facts. You cannot admit that you have been foolish enough to be duped for such a long time. It is painful to be betrayed by your fellow human, betrayed by the scientists that you trusted, betrayed by the media, betrayed by your government. But do not change a thing. 
Do not bother trying to understand. Do not try to admit your mistakes. And certainly, do not try to correct them. Go hide in your complexitis. Thank you very much. Continue to live in your empire of lies, since apparently it suits you. You are comfortable there. You wish to keep believing the narrative because you want to follow the herd like a sheep. You want to be part of the group, part of the majority of self-righteous people. It is the tactic of the ostrich. You hide. You do not want to face reality. School did not teach you how to face problems and take the necessary measures. You prefer to remain non-existent and let the mistake weigh on your children who will one day, inevitably, have to clean up the mess that you have built and that you are leaving behind. If you still have the courage, the question that you must ask yourself are, why did they lie to me so much? Question mark. What justifies such a betrayal? Where does the funding come from to organize a lie on such a global scale? What all-powerful interests are behind such a scam? who benefit from this crime. And like any good investigator, your attitude should be, follow the money. If you have the courage, find out who exactly benefits financially from these lies, and you will find the culprits. This is what I propose to do here below. While Biologically, CO2 is your indispensable ally, while it is the first link in the molecular chain of life for all living beings on Earth, it is presented to you as your enemy. Enemy. <laughs> I can't believe this. Huh? While the greenhouse gas effect is essential for life, while the warm climate that we have been experiencing for several millennia has facilitated the success of human civilizations, these, in fact, ideal climatic conditions are presented to you as the enemy. The media, the scientists, and governments repeat the same lies. But why? The answer is so simple, so obvious, that you cannot see it. It is staring at you in the face. You can see it, blinded as you are by your chronic complexitis. Refer to chapter 2, have a, have a check. Let me explain. Access to energy has been crucial for the success of our species and will continue to be its main driver for centuries, if not for millennia to come. We know that Homo sapiens mastered fire around 400,000 years ago, 400, 600, even 700,000 years ago making a major turning point in our history. We were able to cook our food, thereby increasing its energy value by reducing the energy required for its digestion. We kept warm and protected ourselves from predators. It was not until 1763 that James Watt built the first steam engine, offering humans humans, for the first time, a source of mechanical power. Hmm. 
From there, progress accelerated, accelerated rapidly. In 1806, the patent for the international combustion uh, for the internal combustion engine was issued. In 1886, the first petroleum-powered automobile was develop developed. In 1887, it became clear that the alternating the alternative uh, a current proposed uh, by Nikola Tesla represented the future of electricity energy transmission. In 1942, the first nuclear reactor was built in Chicago, Illinois, in the USA. Access to energy is a the driving force behind our industrial civilizations. It is the source of our current way of life and of your comfort on a daily basis. Of all the commodities traded on the planet, energy in the form of oil, gas and coal represents 90% of the total commodity transaction volume, i.e. Of all commodities, including iron, uranium, copper, zinc, food, uh, no, not food, uh, wood, concrete, uh, all the commodities, 90% of the total transaction volume is concentrated in petrol, gas, charcoal. That is interesting. You should remember that one. We are incredibly fortunate because most of this energy is in gaseous or liquid form. It is therefore easy to extract, refine, and especially easy to transport because, to simplify, with a pump and a hose, the job is done. If we had to transport the same amount of energy in solid form like coal, it would require mechanical shovels, cranes, containers, trains, roofs, in short, much more expensive infrastructures. Even though energy base cost is relatively, relatively low, you are willing to accept high energy prices because it is essential to our economies essential to our way of life and our comfort. Even if you allocate a 10% margin to producers, 10% to refiners, and 10% to transporters slash distributors, the cost of a liter of gasoline in the service station should be a price of a maximum of 25 to 40 cents per liter in dollars or in euros. In fact, according to industry professionals in, the free, in a free market, the price per liter should rather be between 20 and 30 cent per liter. Yet, you pay between 1.5 and 2.5 dollar euro per liter of fuel, depending on the jurisdiction and uh, the countries in which you live. Governments, therefore, take a margin on the product at the pump of between 300% and 800%. Now, do you know of any consumer in the world who would accept giving a 300 to 800% profit margin to suppliers of any consumer goods? Well, obviously not. This may happen in extreme circumstances where a monopoly prevents competition, but it never lasts. In the case of oil, it's even worse. You give 300 to 800% margin to an intermediary, the state, which plays absolutely no role in extraction, refining, transportation, or distribution. 
it just takes its margin. Thank you very much. Only Westerns, Westerners, or Western dictatocracies, as I start to name them, it's a, it's a dictatocracy also called democratic states, if you prefer to stay polite. In reality, they are constitutional monarchies or constitutional dictatorships. Only those are capable of controlling all the players in the global energy market to make us pay between three and ten times its actual value. States use all the strategies at their disposal to hide this financial gold mine from which they extract a ridiculous amount of wealth. They have hidden agreements with the producing countries to lower their production quotas to keep the prices per barrel high. Rest assured, that oil and gas importing states have kickbacks agreements paid to producing states to compensate for any shortfall when they do not fully use their production capacity. Since the state has no source of income other than from your labor, you actually pay all the actors who profit from the system by keeping production level as low as necessary and the price per barrel as high as possible. The United States even goes so far as to stop energy supply flaws from supposedly allied countries like Europe by sabotaging pipelines to protect their own economic and strategic interests while increasing their own revenues. Do you think a state would hesitate to do whatever it takes to protect its most important source of indirect revenues? Energy taxes? Well, of course not. <laughs> Energy taxes are comparable to the gabel, the old salt tax. Without salt, mammals cannot survive. It is a matter of life or death. Please refer to chapter 5 health on quoting this. Without energy, our economy, our jobs, and all the comforts of our modern life disappear. In both cases, the tax is levied on an essential element of your existence. You cannot escape it. Whether through the gabel or energy taxes, the ultimate art for the state is knowing how much it can take from you, how far it can go before provoking a revolution. You had an example of this with the yellow vests in France. To avoid betraying the financial interest of those who put him in power, French President Mr. Emmanuel Macron wanted to increase state revenues. Like all newly elected presidents, he had to demonstrate to his financial partners who paid for his rise to power that he was a good investment. He needed to pay back his sponsors, simply put, to return the favor. Well, of course, you yeah. know. What then could be more effective for him to achieve this than increasing energy taxes? Not only does uh, the state increase its revenues, but it also spreads the burden diversely across all citizens. In addition, the state reduces the purchasing power of all French people, thereby diminishing their freedom, restricting mobility, preventing families from gathering to see each other and stay united. No, no right. The state is creating discord. His main aim 
is divide and conquer. Two birds with one stone. The state enriches itself by stealing the value of your labor, and it divides families to prevent any coalition of reasonably minded people who might revolt. But of course, the state does so for your own good. And because at the end of the day, it is your own fault, because it is all caused by you emitting CO2, polluting, and destroying your own environment. The state is thereby forced to impose its control upon you and to impose their dictatorship, of course, all of which is purely in your interest. It is in your interest. Yeah. Fortunately, the French are an intelligent people. They have already seen it all. And above all, they have a revolutionary mindset and tradition. When the French consider that a matter has gone too far, that the situation is unacceptable, they revolt and restore order in the house. They do not negotiate like Angla in the Anglo-Saxon culture. They revolt. It is beautiful. It is grand. It is courageous. It is the driver of change. It is the only way to put governance systems back into the service of the people because politicians will only accept to, to relinquish their power when forced to do so. That is what makes France a pioneer of political and cultural change globally. Sometimes for the better, as for example during the period of the expansion of democracies throughout the whole of Western Europe following the French Revolution and sometimes for the worse, as for example during our current epoch, with the disastrous dysfunctionality of today's European community. As a friend editor-in-chief of one of the largest British newspapers once told me, where France goes, Europe follows. So, President Emmanuel Macron increases energy taxes. To sweeten the pill, on a rational level, he turns to all the environmental organizations and the mainstream media, which relay the alarmist end-of-the-world lies. On an emotional level, he turns to a child an adolescent actress like Greta Thunberg, who make you feel guilty about what you will leave behind for, your fu for the future generations. Politicians relay the narrative and financially support all the media that contribute to making you feel guilty about the upcoming ecological catastrophe. But the French are less docile or maybe less stupid than their government thinks. And despite all the propaganda of their subsidized press, they do not allow themselves to be manipulated. They say no. They will restore order in the house of France. The yellow vest take to the stage. And, as is their wont, they make a revolution. The state wants to show strength. It does not give away. It arms the police forces with military-grade equipment to suppress the uprising. There are thousands of wounded and several dead. The state's legal violence dominates 
until politicians realize that the risk that they risk losing more than that they are trying to gain and that they are trying to risk <laughs> to risk hitting the wall if they do not negotiate when the people's will is unwavering the state always capitulates because the state depends upon the people it is the parasite that lives of the people it is the expression of the people's will even though the state depends on you is paid by you and is at your service it will only capitulate when forced to do so because it defends its interest before your own that's absolutely clear but be sure of one thing when betrayed the people can easily bring down the strongest fortress and the state always capitulates before the people's collective will because it has no choice it has no other choice this is the basis of social of the social action that we will implement without violence without insults without contempt without destruction of capital while taking care of yourself and your community it is the social non cooperation and i will elaborate on this in chapter 12 social non cooperation the yellow vests imposed on the french state their red line and the french leaders capitulated but it is only a semi victory because the french politicians only adjusted the level of taxes uh, therefore the price of energy to the maximum the french people were willing to accept this limit of acceptance of high energy prices is a function of your minimum energy needs but not only that it is also a function of the guilt you feel when you pollute your environment when you produce co2 supposedly responsible for all this climate change that in turn supposedly destroys your ch- children's future and will supposedly and life on earth if you feel guilty enough for causing all these impending evils you will accept to punish yourself and you will pay a tax to your protective states it is a psychological reaction which with a neurophysiological foundation called externalization in which you must find a scapegoat someone responsible for what is happening to you and you offload your guilt onto them you externalize what you perceive as your responsibility onto another to rid yourself of the violence of the feelings generated states may not fully understand these psychological mechanisms but they have understood that if they can tax you by convincing you that it is in your interest that it is for you for your own good there is very little chance that you will revolt to achieve this they must ensure that you believe CO2 is a pollutant responsible for all your woes and that you are the one responsible for producing CO2 with your car and your heating 
They must make you believe that man has become an all-powerful God on earth, which is rather flattering, by the way, and that through man's action, man has taken control of the climate in all of its ever-changing complexities. Therefore, you are guilty of destroying the future of our environment and therefore you should thank your protective state that so graciously saves you from yourself and pockets the maximum amount of money without the turbulence of a revolution. Please thank your protective state that steals your money that steals the value of your labor with your benevolent consent. If you complain, if you contest, it is because you are irresponsible. You are antisocial. And the state will use the legal violence that it has built via the Constitution via the legal framework and via the procedural code to bring you back into line. If you resist any further, the state gives itself the right to imprison you, to steal your freedom and all your possessions, since in prison you will not need them anymore. That's so good, isn't it? Are you now able to identify the cause and effect relationships that encourage a small group of humans to use all imaginable means to dispossess you of the value of your labor? Are you finally connecting the dots between the reality of the facts and the deceitful interpretation of those facts that humans make to create economic niches that allow them to steal your money? Once again, to quote numerous politicians, the bigger it is, the easier it passes. The bigger the lies, the more they are accepted. There is no conspiracy. There are no conspiracy theories. There are only the fundamental rules of the evolution of life. A seven-year-old child easily understands it. But not you. Because you have chronic complexitis. You always strive to create complex arguments involving all possible factors, even those that are impossible to verify. People who believe in conspiracies have lost the most elementary common sense. They have lost the ability to make the simplest reasoning that are at the origin of our motivations and actions. How is it that the majority of humans let themselves be drawn into complex explanations that, by definition, do not hold up against the simple rules of the evolution of life? Remember, that which is well thought out can be clearly expressed and the words to describe it are easily found. The major catastrophes that the media, government, and envi envi environmentalists alarm you with generally concern events that will potentially occur in 20, 50, or 100, year ti 100 years' time. In 1970, they told you that they would run out of oil in 25 years. In 1980, they told you that acid rain would destroy forests and crops in 15 years' time. 
in 1990. They told you that the ozone layer would disappear in 15 years' time. In 2000, they told you that the polar ice cap would disappear in 20 years' time. Do you really want me to continue, or are you beginning to understand? It is always an anticipation of what is to occur, but not, but has not yet occurred, thus, by definition, unverifiable. No scientist can reliably predict the increase in climate temperature over a century. The best software models on the most powerful computers on the planet are not even capable of calculating the albedo of clouds. No scientist can predict the rise or fall of sea levels over a century, over a millennium, and even less over a hundred thousand years. No scientist can predict the exact size of the ozone hole in a century or indeed the impact of the size of that hole will have upon the planet. When they cannot find a sufficient number of potential future catastrophes, they will find invisible and, in practice, unverifiable threats. Who is going to swim or sail in the middle of the Pacific Ocean to see if the island of plastic waste the size of Texas really exists? Who is going to drive on the site of the Exxon Valdez oil spill in Alaska, in Alaska to verify that it is really devoid of all maritime life? as mainstream media would have you believed? Who is going to dive on the Great Barrier Reef of Australia to confirm the reef's destruction? Who has ever measured the CO2 percentage in the air, CO2 which is an invisible and orderless gas uh, that easily rises to more than 20% times its natural atmospheric concentration in a classroom that has its windows closed? Do you really think that this impedes the work of the students or the teacher? Do you really think that CO2 impedes their intellectual faculties or their ability to learn the lesson? Well, obviously not. your crusade, what you should be doing, probably, where you should allocate your energy, your crusade. Yes, of course, CO2 is beneficial for Mother Nature. However, pollution from heavy metals, fertilizers, pesticides, which are used in agriculture, Plastics, substances released by the petrochemical industries, pharmaceutical industries, and the food industry, these are all lethal pollutants. They are deadly for all living species on Earth, without exception, whether in the fungal, plant, or animal kingdoms. This is where your true fight lies, if you want to get involved, if you genuinely want to do what is right, what is responsible, what will preserve our natural environment in the long term. You must devote your intellectual capacities and energy to everything that has a concrete impact. Fighting against the release of CO2 trapped underground in the form of oil for hundreds of millions of years is a complete waste of time and of energy. It goes against that 
what nature actually needs. Indeed, it potentially endangers life on Earth. On the other hand, fighting against pollution of our environment, which is caused by the byproducts of our human activities, is energy well spent. It is time well invested. It is a cause, a cause worth fighting. Fight against the release of oestrogenic plastics that prevent male fish and amphibians from fertilizing their females. Fight against the release of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, which causes acid rain. Fight against pesticides that kill bees, preventing pollination. Fight against genetically modified seeds that allow for the use of the most harmful pesticides. These are the battles worth fighting. The battles that you are duty-bound to take on. Stop defending the purely financial interests of liars who exploit your goodwill and desire to do good to steal as much of the value of your hard work as possible. Stop fighting the wrong battles and take responsibility now to avoid burdening your children with the weight of your mistakes, the weight of the debts that you leave on their shoulders and for which they will have to pay some day. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, dad. This is what they're going to tell you. The sum of our knowledge which we have at our disposal to understand our world is very limited. When the James Webb Telescope, GWST, provides us with stunning images of the universe for 85% of what we observe, we have no explanation. We invent concepts like dark matter to explain the 85% of the mass of the universe that we can detect by its gravitational effect without being able to define its origin. We invent dark energy to explain the expansion of the universe or the string theory, which is very satisfying from a mathematical point of view, but has no experimental foundation. These theories are purely intellectual exercises where we propose a model and try to prove it we are unable to explain the basics of quantum mechanics or what links together time, speed and gravitation. In spite of all our knowledge, neither you nor I nor any human being is capable of explaining the most elementary phenomena that govern our universe. Our knowledge is almost non-existent in 2024. I would even say pathetic for 85% of what we observe with the most advanced scientific means available today. In all fields, we make hypotheses and we try to confirm them. Sometimes we are lucky and the hypothesis is rapidly confirmed by repeatable, verifiable experiments that always produce the same result. On other occasions, we are less fortunate and we must remain ignorant for decades, even centuries, until enlightened individuals shed light on our understanding. 
We should free those, by the way. We should free them. That's another subject. This is how we progress, how we gradually expand the scope of our knowledge. It is the only path that can lead us to a comprehensive understanding of the phenomenon that we observe and of the universe in which we live. Humility should be the fundamental rule, but unfortunately, it is not. Educational systems, especially universities, produce arrogant people who disdain those who do not share their certainties, who divide by excluding all who are not part of their clique. Our knowledge is so limited that we have no consensus on anything, not in the field of medicine, or in physics, or in finance, or even less in politics. In 2024, irrespective of the subject, if four people share the same opinion, you can be certain that they have a hidden agenda. If four people recount the same thing on a subject, they are lying to you. They are defending either financial or political interests, which unfortunately amounts to very much the same thing today. It may be an extreme approach, but it is the one that you must adopt. Please do not fall into paranoia, and please trust when you so desire. But if you do so, please confer your trust cautiously. Verify everything that is presented to you as a certainty, especially if it has an impact on your quality of life, on your health, on the education of your children and especially if it has an impact on your money. Verify for yourself everything that impacts your finances, everything that justifies the taxes and fees the state takes from you. Verify for yourself everything that impacts your health. Do not take any medication or vitamins produced in the financial interest of the pharmaceutical inter industry. Whatever the subject, demand total transparency. Demand a simple explanation that you can understand instantly. And if you do not get it, and if you are overwhelmed, with complicated explanations, walk away. Eliminate the person who manipulates you from your life. Trust yourself. Use your intuition. Return to simple reasoning and explanations. And you will live better. Your horizon will clear up. And your universe will become just brighter. Your duty is to tear away the veil of lies. But you will do so with great difficulty. Or you will not do it at all because it is too painful. Asking you to question your beliefs goes against your brain's functioning, against the confirmation bias and your brain will only do it when forced. Please refer to chapter 2, Complexititis. Refusing lies is a personal choice that you can make, that is within everyone's reach. It means saying, the lie will not pass through me. It is a life choice 
because in our world, this will render you incompatible with the majority of people. Refusing to lie will cut you from a lot of individuals, but it will connect you with the right one. If you say, the lie will not pass through my mouth. It is, it is primary for yourself. It is also for your loved ones, and in the long run, for all of humanity. The choice to never lie will return your freedom, your intellectual honesty. It will bring you inner peace. It will allow you to live in harmony with yourself with your, and your universe will become simpler. You will understand it better. You will spend your time sharing your true conviction with others and you will listen to theirs. It is said that the punishment of, a, of the liar is not that others do not believe him, but rather than he can no longer believe others. The liar is convinced that all humans function just like him. Without education, without values, without ethical principles. He literally cuts himself, himself off from the rest of the world because no one believes him and he, in turn, cannot believe anyone else. In doing so, he deprives himself of the driver of our species' success, communication. Harmonious collaboration in a community with individuals who trust each other. You might object with the proverb, not all truths are good to tell. And that is, of course, true. But the truth always comes out in the end. The little lies of everyday life, which in themselves mean nothing, must be eliminated because they will cost you everything. When they are discovered, and they always are, sooner or later, they will cost you the trust of the other person the loss of your ability to collaborate in harmony with the person beside you. If you cannot answer a question for whatever reason, say that you do not, sh do not wish to answer or that you cannot answer, but do not lie. Never lie. Honor. Honor the truth more than man, and you will become stronger. You will become a solid pillar of the building in which we all live. Anyway, little joke, but it's not totally a joke. In a few decades, quantum computers will be the norm, and they will shed light on today's lies. In, ultra, in an ultra-simplified manner. I will elaborate a bit more in another chapter about that. But in an ultra-simplified way of, this, of, of presenting it, the quantum computers are computers in which time does not exist. You know, they're using quantum superposition. I'll, I'll go on about it somewhere else. Therefore, they will be able to crack any encryption codes in a few seconds. In other words, as soon as this technology will be available, and that's a few decades down the line, it will be, a 12-year-old hacker will have free access to all data contained on the most secured server on the planet in today's technology. It would seem wise to prepare today 
for the total transparency quantum computers will impose upon us. Hmm. That's a wise... Uh, as we all know, any action started in lies ends up in shame. This new quantum computer technology will impose the truth as a new standard. Lies will be very difficult to hide. The third-party oversight principle, as suggested in Chapter 9 about legal framework, is probably the best way to anticipate on the paradigm shift quantum computers will impose upon us all. Free access to the truth. We need to prepare for that. Otherwise, the collateral damage when those computers are the norm are going to be uncountable. As for me, I do not answer all questions. I make mistakes because I'm human. What I say is true today and might be false in four months, in four years, in 40 years, or in 400 years. But I have, I decided many years ago that lie will never pass through me. The lie will never pass through my mouth. Truth is my choice. And if one day I lie to you, it means that you have lost me. In fact, it will mean that I am dead. Summary. You live in an empire of lies and you accept it because you do not realize it. You are neither stupid nor ignorant, but you, tr but you trust because you are a good person who wants to live in harmony with your community within your human environment. You cannot imagine being betrayed by so many people you label as conspiracy theorists those who try to force you to face the reality of the facts because it is too painful to accept. It is your choice and it is respectable. But perhaps it is time to take back your life, to trust your common sense, your intuition, to trust yourself. If you expand your energy fighting the wrong battles, you will not have any energy left for the right battles. Demand a simple, accessible explanation from others along with the transparency that goes with it. In return, make a personal commitment to say, the lie will not pass through me. It is a life choice. You will regain your freedom. It is within everyone's reach. It is our future. And it is what you will be proud to pass on to your children as a legacy. Thank you very much for your benevolent attention. Peace out.